All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, just an FYI, I have a new camera now, so this video is going to sound and look a little different than the previous videos on my channel, uh, but hopefully it is for the better. Based on everything I've seen already, this is just outstanding compared to my previous video quality, so hopefully it is enjoyable for you guys and you can hear and see me okay. Um, I'm using this for the rest of my videos in the future. Now, today we're going to be brewing a Czech Pilsner, or a Bohemian Pilsner. Um, so this is a lager that is a little bit hoppier than your standard Pilsner. Um, we're looking at a little, relatively high IBU count here. Um, and uh, it's going to be using primarily Czech hops, so saws. And um, hopefully it benefits from the really soft water profile that I have here with the city water. So right now what we're going to be doing is heating up about six gallons of water to approximately 160 degrees Fahrenheit for the mash. We're at 140 right now, so not really there yet. Um, but as far as the grain bill goes, I've got seven and a half pounds of just straight Pilsner malt and then half a pound of carrot bills. So not really that complicated of a malt bill um, as it is supposed to be just a really light, really clean Pilsner. <laughs> so that's uh, where you get grain bill from. As far as hops go, we're shooting for like the mid 40s for IBU, so I've got almost five ounces of size going into this. Keep in mind that size is a low alpha hop, so it's like 3.4% uh, alpha acid, so it's not really going to be uh, as hoppy as if I was using like you know, Chinook or something. So basically, um, so we're shooting for like an IBU of 40 to 45, um, and uh, an original gravity of about 1.055, should go down to about 1.011. But this is kind of a nice, not too strong of a beer, um, but you know, enough kick behind it to keep it interesting. So, uh, hopefully, this works out pretty well. Um, I will circle back with you when uh, the mash is beginning. Now, so keep in mind that this video is about me brewing a lager, not an ale. Normally, I'm making ales, um, and I have a lot of experience with making ales, but this is only my second lager. So, keeping that in mind, don't take this video like word for word as being the truth on how to brew a lager. This is just a way that worked for me last time I brewed a lager. So, you know, it's just kind of like an experimentation for fun kind of deal. Um, I like Pilsners and, you know, this might be a disaster, it might not be a disaster. Either way, it goes on the channel and we have fun with it. Um, so, my first lager was an Oktoberfest, uh, but I didn't film that one because I had a bunch of house guests over. So this is my first lager that's actually going on the channel. So, like I said, Keep it in mind, this is just a method that sort of works for me, and it's really more just an experiment for fun, as most home brewing is. And, uh, you know, I'm here to have fun with it. So, so anyway, just take it at face value. Um, I'm just here to kind of provide some sort of reference material for all you new brewers out there. All right, we're at 160, so let's go ahead that green. All right, it says 154.6, 155. Okay, we're a little high on the temperature, but that is totally fine. Uh, off by one degree shouldn't really make a big difference. All right, so it's been over 90 minutes, so it's about time to finish up this mash. So let's grab a temperature reading. So I don't know if you can see that, but it is 148.78, something like that. Uh, so, you know, we lost a little bit of temperature at 5 degrees or so um, throughout the 90 minutes, but I'm fairly confident that uh, we got full conversion anyway.
All right, so uh, pre-boil OG reading is uh, Zen. It's cooled down. We have about 1.042. So we were shooting for 46, um, but you know, given the imprecise reading that is a pre-boil OG, this is fine. Um, so as long as I'm in like the right plus or minus 10 gravity points area, then we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this back in. While I'm cooling this down, um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about fermentation and what we're going to do with that. So basically, um, pretty simple. So it is a lager, and it's using lager yeast. So I'm going to rehydrate some lager yeast later tonight. Um, but first, I'm going to take the fermenter and uh, put it in my fridge and let it cool down to about 50-ish, maybe 45 degrees. And um, I'm going to rehydrate the lager yeast. I'm going to rehydrate it at about 85, 90 degrees, and then put that in the fridge as well. So that'll cool down as well as the uh, the beer. So tomorrow morning, when I wake up and go to work, I'll be able to pitch the yeast in the morning um, and aerate and let it go um, for you know however long it needs to go. But basically, what we're going to do is leave it in the fridge. It'll be in there at about 50 degrees, uh, give or take a couple of degrees, and it should ferment out completely within two three weeks. Uh, my Oktoberfest, which used the same yeast fermented out at about three weeks, so I figure I can do the same thing with this beer and uh, hopefully it works out. So once that is done, what we're going to want to do is take the beer out of the fridge um, and then let it sit at about 70 degrees or so for two or three days. Alright, so here's the original gravity sample. We're looking at about 1.054. Uh, so honestly, only one gravity point lower than uh, what I was shooting for, so all in all, that sounds like a perfect brew day. Yeah, so we're gonna let this thing sit in the fridge overnight so it cools down to about 45 or 50 degrees. And then we'll pitch the yeast tomorrow. We've gotten to the point now where fermentation at 50 degrees is finally completed. So we had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning. Um, so I actually ended up leaving my fridge at a slightly lower temperature than I thought it was. Basically it was at about 40 degrees instead of that magical 45 or 50 degrees that lager yeast really liked. So 40 degrees, um, the yeast actually stayed dormant, so I introduced yeast into the wort, and a week later, I checked the wort, and nothing. No gravity change at all. Uh, so, thankfully, because it was in a sealed environment, and because it was colder, it didn't get infected. So, I introduced some new yeast into the solution to keep things going, um, and cranked that temperature up to about 45 to 50 degrees, I think it was about 50. And within a week after that, fermented all the way back down to 1.010. So at that point, it's pretty much finished fermentation, except for a couple gravity points. So what we're going to do now is called diacetyl rest. Then we take it out of the fridge and let it slowly heat up to room temperature, about 65 to 70 degrees for two to three days. And what this is going to do is encourage the yeast to complete that final bit of fermentation. And then also they're going to clean up a lot of the byproducts that are uh, created during cold fermentation such as diacetyl. So basically, there you have it. Um, I'm gonna let it sit for two or three days and then we'll bottle. All right, so I got our final gravity sample here. Uh, it looks like we're down to about 1.010, which is a great final gravity for this beer. Um, so that puts us at about 5.7% alcohol, a little on the heavy side, but you know, all around not too bad. So we're gonna lager this in the bottles actually. Um, that way I can just kind of keep it in a little more convenient to store uh, container 
in the cases instead of um, actually doing it in the fermenter itself. I've had success doing it either way. It is ultimately up to you. Uh, it's just a little harder to resist actually pulling bottles out and um, enjoying them before they are actually ready um, when you do it this way, but I think that's a weakness we all have, so I'll make peace with it. All right, so we finished fermentation and we finished uh, the first point of lagering. So we got to the point where it's uh, finally crisp and clean. Um, so from here on out, just keep on storing it cold um, and pick out bottles as I feel like drinking them and uh, enjoying them. So, so here we have our Czech Pilsner. It came out to 5.8% ABV with uh, 42 IBUs. So that's not bad. Uh, I think it's all well within style guidelines. So without further ado, let's crack this open and uh, take a look, shall we? All right, I have my uh, hot brown mug here. All right, so with a clean, clear lager like this that you bottle condition, always leave a little bit left in the bottom because that's going to have some turbid yeast in it and that is going to create um, a cloudy beer if you pour the entire bottle. So always leave a little bit left behind so you get a nice crystal clear beer that looks like this. Um, so as you can see, it's got decent head retention. Um, I've had a couple takes here, so it's been a couple minutes. Um, but the head is still more or less there. I'm going to chalk that up to the carapils and the fact that I actually let it sit for a full two weeks uh, at room temperature to bottle condition and carb. Um, so as far as color goes, it's actually a little dark. Uh, I prefer my pilsners to be even more pale than this. Not sure exactly how you achieve that when I have a grain bill that's just like two to four SRN malts. Um, but uh, anyway, it's acceptable. Um, very, very clear as you can tell on um, the uh, the clarity of the beer, it's almost bright. I wouldn't call it exactly bright um, because I didn't use gelatin or anything to really clarify it, but I think a couple more weeks in the fridge at lager temperature and it might actually brighten. Um, so next, aroma. Um, not really that much aroma. You get a really strong Pilsner aroma, but there's no DMS, um, there's no corn. Uh, I was kind of hoping for more uh, hops in the aroma actually than I have. Although if you're looking for them, you can find them. So next up, we'll talk about taste. All right, so that's got a very clean, crispy, ooh, very dry finish. Um, very crispy, uh, you know, you get that from a lager. Um, there's no DMS, no detectable DMS, at least uh, within this. We've got a lot of strong grain flavor um, from the good Pilsner malt that I used. You get some hot flavor in the first couple seconds. The bitterness is there. Uh, the bitterness is noticeable, but definitely not annoying. Definitely not overpowering. It fades away pretty quickly. And then having a really super dry finish on it like that actually uh, really encourages you to take another sip. Uh, very clear, very nice, very crispy. Body, couldn't be better, honestly. Very, very, very light body. Uh, it's very dry, finished out pretty low, so um, all in all, pretty solid Pilsner. I'm pretty happy with it uh, for my first time trying to brew it. And uh, I definitely could use some improvement as far as getting a lighter color, and uh, probably could use a few more hop additions in the end. Um, but all in all, honestly, it's a pretty good beer, and I'm pretty happy with it. So as always, you know, feel free to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon down below. Um, comment if you've heard the beer, if you have questions, um, if you just want to say something. All things are welcome as long as they are civil, of course. And um, I'll catch you next time.